Today I'm gonna to show you guys how to replace a sky in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. We got a cool episode for you today. Basically what we're doing is we're taking an image that was submitted to one of our contests and we're going to be taking the sky completely out of that and replacing it with a different sky and then I'm going to show you guys how to match colors and just overall tone the image so the new sky looks like it was basically there from the beginning. It's going to be really cool and it's not going to take that long which is great. Let's get into it. So here's the image we're going to be working with today. This is Dan's image and uh, I love the image. It's so cool and it does open up a lot of opportunities for us to do some great things here in Photoshop. Then we've got this image and uh, this is just something I took while I was on vacation in Utah a couple years ago. And whenever I'm on vacation, I like to just take my digital SLR and if there's a nice sky, I'll just like go out and take pictures of the sky um, because being able to replace a sky can make a huge difference in a photo. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So uh, just a good tip. Keep your camera with you if you can and uh, take pictures of skies because they look nice. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and use our move tool. I'm going to hit shift and click and drag from one image to the other and then we're going to hit F to full screen this. Okay, now the first thing you'll see is that this image is actually a lot bigger. This was submitted to our contest, uh, this image by Dan, and this is a full 21 megapixels from a 5D Mark II. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make that invisible and in this case this is actually not going to be really that hard to cut out our, um, our sky because it's, it's so simple here. We've got a nice clean line between the, uh, the ground here and our subject and I'm just going to use our magic wand tool. So what I'm going to do is zoom in and click right here on our magic, with our magic wand tool. Now what you'll notice is like it didn't select out as much as I would like it to. Um, there's a little bit of fuzz, things like that, right around our subject. So if that happens, you can just bring your tolerance up. Let's try bringing our tolerance up to about 18. There we go. And we can see even more was selected. So that looks pretty good. Now if we want to continue with that, we'll just hold the shift key. And we're just going to click a couple of times. There we go. And make sure that everything gets selected out just like we want. And then I'm just going to, because all the tricky area, tricky area was, were taken care of with the bottom of the image, I'm just going to grab my lasso tool and hold down the shift key and just select out the rest of the image, just like that. And now our total, all of our sky is selected out. So what we're going to do is we have a couple options. We can either load this as a layer mask for the other sky layer, or we could just load this as a layer mask for this layer, and then we can put the other sky under it. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to turn our background layer into a regular layer by holding Alt and just double clicking on it. Now it's a regular layer. You can move it up and down and things like that. Okay, we're going to click on our layer mask and now we've got a layer mask for that layer. It's actually inverted of what we want. So we're going to go ahead and flip that around. So to do so, I'm going to hit Command I on the layer mask and now we have our subject and the ground and uh, we have no sky behind it. So now we can put our sky in from our other image. So we're going to go ahead and make that visible. And I'm just going to hit Command, open bracket, and that's going to bring it below our current layer. OK, so now we can basically like figure out where we want to put it. Because it is such a larger image, we could you know, put it here and include some of the rocks and things like that in the background. We can move it up. I'm going to hit Command T to resize it so we can see more of the sky. We're going to hit this chain link and then just bring that right down there. The chain link just locks the width and the height together. There we go, and something like that I think looks really good. Now in this case, I actually do want to include a little bit of the background in the back because I, I think it's just going to be nice. It's going to add a little bit. Let's zoom in a little bit and refine our selection a little bit more because it's, it's not as nice as it could be. It's a little bit on the fuzzy side. So we're going to click here on our layer mask and I'm going to go to select and then down here to refine mask. All right, let's just bring up our feathering just a little bit. And then I'm going to shift the edge inside, and then we're going to bring up our contrast as well. There we go. And feathering nice and small. Cool. There we go. So you can see there's the before and the after. And we're going to hit OK. All right. So now that we've got our new sky pretty much in place, what we need to do is match the colors from the, from the basically the background image to the foreground image. And then we're going to do some other cool, really cool coloring things on the image itself. So we're going to grab an adjustment layer. A lot of this is going to be using adjustment layers and clipping masks to make sure everything like actually looks really good together. So the first thing we're going to do, let's start off with this area down here because I really want it to look like it's kind of blending in to the background. Um, we're going to grab an adjustment layer and I'm going to hit curves 
There we go. And now what we can do, you can see that if I make this a little bit brighter or a little bit darker, it's affecting our entire image. Uh, we don't want that. We actually just want this to affect the layer that our subject is on. So to get this to only affect this layer, you can hit Option Command G or just right click here and go to Create a Clipping Mask. And now this layer is only going to affect the layer that it's clipped to. You can see there's a little arrow. Okay, so now that it's clipped to that layer, we can just kind of like make it brighter or darker and really anything we want, and uh, it's going to match our image just a little bit better. Okay, there's a lot of things that need to be done. We're going to take a quick look here and uh, look at things like contrast and color and things like that. So you can see this area here is like quite a bit darker. Sorry, there's a, quite a bit more light in this area than we have in the background there. And uh, so we need to match that using the curves. Not only that, but it's completely the wrong color as well. So we need to work with color as well as contrast. And uh, we're going to do both of those. We're going to do a curves adjustment layer and a hue saturation layer. OK, so our curves adjustment layer, what we're going to do, let's double click here. And I'm going to bring up our black levels just a little bit. And then we're going to bring down our white levels. And this is basically just lowering the amount of contrast that we have in the image. Now, if it's tough to see what you're doing, like it, sometimes it's kind of tough because the, the colors get in your way of telling what you're doing. Uh, what I'd like to do is create a channel mixer layer. Here we go. And then click on this monochrome button. And basically what that's just going to do is it's going to turn your image black and white. And so now I can see what's going on with my contrast without having to worry so much about my color. So we're going to go back to curves and I'm just going to see kind of what I can do here to match it a little bit better. There we go. And we can see here's the before. I'm just looking at this part, mind you. And there's the after. And it is matching quite a bit better. Now, there are a couple areas like here where you can see like the distant mountains and stuff like that. I'm just going to grab my layer mask. And I'm going to, with my regular lasso tool, remove those away. Because I, I don't need those areas to be visible. So we're going to hold Alt or Option and hit Delete right over top of that. All right, that's looking better. So now that we have our black and white looking pretty good, uh, we're going to turn that back invisible. And we can see that our color is still totally off. Our color needs a lot of work. So what we're going to do is grab another adjustment layer. And I'm going to go to Hue Saturation. Again, we're going to hit Option Command G, because we only want this to be visible on this layer. And now we're going to work with the color. So I'm going to click on this Colorize button. And we're basically just going to see what we can do by changing our hue and our saturation. All right. And again, this can be a little bit tricky as well. So it does take some just kind of like playing around to figure out where you're going to be. But obviously, you can tell that's way too saturated. It doesn't look right at all. That's too little saturation. Um, so right about there is looking pretty good. All right. And then we just want to basically try to do what we can to match the color from the area behind. OK, that looks pretty good. But because this is a colorized adjustment layer, it just pretty much makes everything the exact same color. And we don't want that. Uh, we do want to bring some of the color in, but we want a little bit of that variation from the original image to remain. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, uh, we're going to use Blend If to basically apply this to either the shadows or the highlights. I know it's a lot of steps, but it kind of just makes common sense. It's like, OK, this looks a little too flat. What can we do? We still need to color it, but we still need to have some of the original color. So we're going to zoom out. Double click on our hue saturation adjustment layer right there. All right. And then here on our layer style, I'm going to hold Alt or Option and go from my underlying layer from the left all the way to the right there. All right. There we go. And basically, what this does is it makes it not visible where the underlying layer is darker. So where this layer is darker. Or you can go from the right to the left and figure out which of these is going to work a little bit better, either right to the left or left to the right. Let's go left to the right. All right, somewhere right about there is going to start to bring in some of the color from the underlying layer. There we go. So let's hit the before. You can just see it looks like really flat, and there's not a lot of detail in here. And it looks Photoshop, like it doesn't look real. And there's the after. So it's still got that nice coloring from this hue saturation layer, but it does have some color, some nice detail from our uh, from our um, actual layer itself. Okay. So that's a really good start. Now, keep in mind also that these layers are affecting our subject. And really, I don't want them to affect our subject. I just want them to affect the rock here. So what we're going to do is just load, click on our layer mask. And I'm going to paint black right over top of our subject. There we go. And this layer as well. Because I want her to have these, some of the original color that she 
you know, kind of came with. Okay, now we're looking good. So what we're gonna do next is I actually do wanna color her a little bit more. And to do that, we're gonna grab a curve adjustment layer, Option Command G to clip that as well. So you can see a lot of clipping, a lot of clipping masks. They really help. We're gonna go to our red channel and really just drag that up and our blue channel and drag that down a little bit to kind of get this. There we go. A little of that nice orange. I'm gonna hit Command I on there and then paint this visible, which is just gonna really add a lot of vibrant color. So it's gonna help her stand out from the rocks in the background and everything like that. All right, just paint a little bit there on her body to bring some of that color in there. And I'm doing a pretty quick job with my layer masks here, guys, just because this is a, you know, just a quick free tutorial. Um, but if you do want to do, you know, if this were for, you know, a client or something like that, you'd want to spend a little bit more time on your layer masks. All right, there we go. And that's looking great. So let's see what it looks like in black and white. Pretty good. I want to play with my curves just a little bit more. So we're going to hit Option Command G on that and see what, you know, just bringing this down in brightness just a little bit. All right, I think that helps out. There we go. It really helps to be able to see it, these images in black and white because it, it just gives you a better idea of what's working and as far as like your light values go without having to worry about color at all. Um, I'm also gonna like take the ridge off of this little area because I just don't like how dark it is right up there. So this is just a personal preference because I we do have a light sky and I kind of want the, the border between them to be like a lighter border rather than just like darks and shadows. So with my lasso tool, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm trying to basically like shake my hand a little bit as I'm moving around with my selection. And that's gonna kind of imitate rocks as I, as I do this. All right, so here on my layer mask, we're gonna shift delete and uh, hit fill with black. So that's gonna make that invisible, whatever I click there. Okay, we're looking pretty good. So that was all basically with our layer of our subject. And now what we wanna do is figure out what can we do with our, um, with our sky. So if I make this guy invisible, or I can just shift click on the layer mask, you can see, we'll turn those off, kind of what our original sky looked like as compared to this guy. And the original one was just a little bit darker. So we do wanna bring some of that color into our original sky as well. So I'm gonna grab my adjustment layer. We're gonna to go to curves. And now, let's just zoom out here a little bit. We're just gonna make that a little bit darker as well. Let's hit Command I on that. And then I'm gonna grab my gradient tool and then coming from the top to the bottom, we're just gonna fill that in. So it's a little bit darker there as well. All right, this is starting to look really, really good. We're almost there, guys. Just adjust our layers just a little bit here. If something doesn't look exactly right, you can just kind of play with your lights and darks and things like that. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, I'm gonna bring down the saturation just a little bit on the rocks in the front. Um, it, it's pretty right, there was just a lot of green to begin with, and I kind of wanted it to be a little more neutral so we can help draw more attention to our subject. So we're gonna create another hue saturation adjustment layer. We're gonna hit Option Command G on that as well, and I'm gonna bring my saturation down just a little bit. There we go, hit Command I on that, and then we're gonna paint this white right over here on these rocks. And this is just kind of a personal preference. Like I, I just didn't want these to be as green. It still was, you know, matching fairly well. Um, I just think that the, this other, you know, desaturation works just a little bit better. So there's the before and the after with that. Okay, now it's time to do some color work to get the shadows and the highlights to match from basically the sky that we had to begin with and our, um, and our sky or our, our foreground image. So we don't have to worry about any clipping masks or anything now, because we're gonna be doing these adjustment layers and apply them to everything. So I'm gonna shift click all these adjustment layers with the layer itself and hit Command G. So we've got basically just this group hanging out over top of our rocks there. And then we're gonna shift click and hit Command G to group those as well. Okay, next we're gonna to do to bring those colors together, I'm gonna to hit a color balance adjustment layer. We're gonna to go to our shadows and I'm gonna pump a little bit of blue into the shadows. And then here in our midtones, we're gonna pull some reds and some yellows. There we go. And what this does is it just kind of like helps to color everything together. So if you are replacing like a sky or anything like that in an image, um, having like the ability to color the shadows and the midtones and the highlights separately after you're done will help bring them together. So like the colors in the sky are now going to mimic a little bit better the colors that are going on here on the ground. Okay, now that that's done, we're going to grab a level adjustment layer. Just real quick, I'm going to go to our blue channel. We're just going to color tone this a little bit. 
and pull up a little bit of light on our blue, on our low end, and then there we go, a little bit from our from the right side. And that's gonna put some yellows in the highlights. So um, again, this sort of thing really helps out whenever you are doing any type of compositing like this, because a little bit of color adjustment that's applied to the whole image is just gonna look quite a bit better than anything that's just you know, having just been applied to either the highlights or just the shadows. All right, here we go. And then one last thing, we're just gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna create, um, let's fill this with white. All right, we're gonna hold Alt or Option, fill that with white, double click on this, and then I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and go from my left all the way to the right here. And this is just gonna bring in some highlights. There we go. And it's gonna bring those highlights into the cloud layer behind and it's gonna bring the highlights into the rocks. So kind of everything has got the same type of treatment. And this really does help whenever you guys are doing this type of compositing. Let's make that a little bit brighter. And there we can see. It's not incredibly powerful. You can see it's, it's relatively subtle, but there you can see it's just the same colors being reflected here in this rock and in this rock and in her dress. And that's just gonna help everything kind of like blend back together a little bit better. All right, and we'll group those together so you can see the before and the after with those layers as well. All right, guys, and that's it. How to replace the sky in Photoshop with some other color toning. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It didn't take too incredibly long. Obviously, I was explaining it, but if you're doing it yourself, just a couple curve adjustment layers, some hue saturation, and some clipping masks. You guys can get this done in no time. If you like what we got going on here at Flurn, be sure to check out Flurn.com where we offer interviews and pro tutorials, which are for their Photoshop episodes like this, but they're like two and three hours long and they go very, very, very in depth. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know how we're doing in a comment down below and share it with your friends. I know that's a heck of a lot of instruction and you don't have to do all of it. In fact, you don't have to do any of it, but <laughs> we'd appreciate it if you did. Thanks so much guys and we'll flirt you later. Bye-bye. Was that a good episode? Yeah. I was, I'm scared that I make bad episodes.